Chapter two is on market forces, demand and supply. Our learning objectives are first to understand the law of demand, how price and quantities are related and what causes demand to shift. Secondly, the linear demand function, and we'll use that to quantify demand and consumer surplus. Next is the law of supply, how producers determine the quantity of goods to supply based on the price and what causes supply to shift and what are the impact of government interventions. Fourth, we'll look at the supply function in order to quantify supplier and producer surplus. Finally, we'll, we'll use comparative static analysis to forecast the impact of shifts in supply and demand or both. How does the demand curve reflect the consumer's desire for goods? Well, the market demand curve shows the relationship of the quantity and price per unit of a good that all consumers are willing and able to purchase, holding all other items constant. The law of demand holds that the quantity of goods that customers are willing and able to purchase will increase as the price falls and on the other direction will decrease as the price rises and price and quantity are therefore inversely related. The market demand curve looks like this it's downward sloping and we'll see that as the price will rise the demand will drop and we'll look at what determines the shape and position of the demand curve. They include income, prices of other related goods, advertising and consumer taste, population and consumer expectations. The demand function is an expression that shows that the quantity of X, which is the product demanded, that's the superscript D, equals a function of the price of X, the price of Y, which is a related good, M, which is the income, and H, which are all other variables. What can cause a change in market demand? First is income. If income rises and the amount you consume goes up, then that's a normal good. An example would be airline travel. If you have more money, you'll travel more and use the airlines. The other direction is what happens if your income rises and we actually use less of a good? One example would be the bus. If we have a lot of income, maybe we'll take a cab, maybe we'll take Uber, maybe we'll rent a car or buy a car, or maybe we'll take an airline. So bus travel is, in this example, an inferior good. Next are the prices of related goods. A substitute good is one where the price of X, if it goes up, would cause the quantity of X to go down. But if the quantity of Y goes up, then it's a substitute, right? So if Pepsi raises price, Pepsi's quantity would go down and Coca-Cola would go up. And that's what is reflected here of P of X goes up and Q of Y goes up as well. Next are complement goods, where if the price of X goes up and the quantity of Y goes down, then they're complementary goods. In other words, they're bought together. So in a bar, if the price of beer goes up, then people buy less beer and they will buy less pretzels. So the, the quantity of pretzels will drop as will the quantity of beer consumed. So those are called complement goods. Next are advertising and consumer tastes. Informational or persuasive advertising could have effect, that's the intention anyway, of paying for advertisement. Next are demographics. Baby boomers are gonna cause a shift in demand for products and services geared to senior citizens. The consumer expectations is the viewpoint that we have about the future and how that might affect our demand today. And of course, there are other factors, sometimes related to specific products. So changes in demand are gonna be illustrated in the next two examples. The first is just a normal state where we have a downward sloping curve, where at A, we have a certain amount that we're willing to buy at a higher price. However, the price were to drop to B, the quantity demand it would rise. That's kind of a normal shape of a demand curve. Next, we'll look at what happens where there's a shift in underlying demand. An example of one where there would be increased demand is that Birkenstocks are now popular again. Well, that would shift the demand curve to the right. So at a given price, the demand will increase just because of shift in demand. On the other side, let's say people stop eating beef because we've moved to impossible burgers, right? That would shift the demand curve to the left. So at the same price, we would have a lowering of quantity. Notice these have nothing to do with the particular price or the product itself, but in the demand for that product. Advertising could also have an effect. So this is the demand curve before advertisements. And we want to see that clothing manufacturers want to increase 
the demand without cutting a price because they could sell more if they cut price. But what if they don't want to do that? They want to spur demand by advertising. Well, the goal is to have advertising shift the demand curve to the right such that at the same price, we'll sell more product or we'll see that the same demand would also be generating at a higher price. So both of these are positive outcomes for the company that's engaging in advertisements.